Welcome back everyone, my name is Angelo. A lot happened in August. The markets had a rough month and were down more than 5% at one point. I transferred some ETFs between brokers, I'll tell you why and the exact steps needed in case that's something you're considering as well. And there are a few interesting news regarding peer-to-peer -peer lending and Bitcoin as well. While the month of August tends to be pretty boring historically, this one was far from that. So let's not waste any more time and take a look at what happened in my portfolio to each of my investments in ETFs peer to peer lending and crypto. Starting with stocks in the form of low cost ETFs, making up the majority of investments I share with my wife. Here's where our ETF portfolio stands as of today, September 1st, 2023. As you can see, we're down a bit over the past month, but we're still up over 11.6% or 24,800 euros in value since the start of the year, plus 940 euros in dividends so far in 2023 from our older distributing ETF shares. While our main ETF, the accumulating Vanguard FTSE All World, was down as much as 4.2% in euros in the middle of August, it ultimately managed to recover most of its losses, finishing at minus 0.83% for the month. With a year-to-date performance of 13.12% in 2023, we certainly can't complain. Okay, now let's get to the main story I wanted to cover in this video. I transferred some older ETF shares of mine from three different places over to my personal number one low-cost broker in Europe, Interactive Brokers. More specifically, I moved some shares in the distributing Vanguard FTSE Oval ETF, which we had purchased before January 2021, which is when we made the switch to only buying the accumulating version of the same ETF. As for why I moved them, even though you can and should trade this ETF directly in euros, if that's your home currency, the distributing ETF pays out its dividends in US dollars, which are then converted to euros automatically by most European brokers, with you usually losing a bit due to either currency conversion fees or less than optimal exchange rates set by each broker. Meanwhile, on interactive brokers, you're able to keep the dividends you receive in US dollars and you're not forced to exchange them and pay conversion fees. You can even withdraw your US dollars directly for free once per month to an account like Revolut for example and exchange them there for free without paying conversion fees. The fact that you can keep US dollars on IB also means you usually get them a few days before you tend to receive them on other brokers, which usually take a few days before converting them and paying them out to your account in euros. So that's another nice benefit I really appreciate which further solidifies why Interactive Brokers is my personal number one low-cost broker in Europe. Before I show you what I did for the ETF transfer, don't forget to gently tap the like button if you're enjoying the video so far and to subscribe if you haven't yet. If you'd like to support me you can find my links to interactive brokers and anything else I talk about down below in the description. Okay, in my case the three brokers I transferred the ETF from were DeGiro, Scalable Capital and Smart Broker. As you may have seen in my Best Brokers in Europe video from a few months ago, I'm not a big fan of DeGiro anymore due to the share lending policy you can't opt out of and their current fee model. But I would have had no problem keeping these long-term investments on Scalable Capital or Smart Broker. Still, I liked the idea of simplifying and combining these shares on a single account since I'm not buying the distributing version anymore anyway and I wanted to save myself the conversion fees which I mentioned before. Here's what I had to do for each transfer. First of all, I had to announce the incoming transfer on Interactive Brokers itself. To transfer stocks or ETFs to Interactive Brokers, you need to click on Transfer and Pay, Transfer Positions, Incoming, and then select all other regions in case you're transferring from another European broker. Luckily, IB charges zero fees for this or even for transfers to other European brokers. Next, you click on select, after which you enter the details of the financial institution you're transferring from. Here's what you need to enter for DeGiro. The one thing worth knowing here is that under account number, you need to enter your DeGiro username, not a number. IB also asks for an email where they can reach DeGiro for the transfer, which you can see here. Make sure you check which email you need to use for DeGiro from your country by searching for outgoing transfers in DeGiro's help desk. Here's the information they gave me for my DeGiro Ireland account. Then you scroll down, click on add asset and select stock if you're transferring stocks or ETFs. Next, you search for the ETF you're transferring, either by entering its symbol, in my case VWRL for the distributing Vanguard FTSE All World, and click on search. Next, you select the correct version, in our case the one traded in euros. And lastly, you enter the amount of shares you want to transfer over. In my case, I had a total of 80 shares I wanted to move from the Giro. If you're only transferring a single ETF, you then click on save and finish and continue at the bottom. Now we get a summary of the transaction which we double check and sign at the bottom with our name. We then click on continue and we're done from Interactive Brokers side. Now we just need to print and sign this customer account transfer letter of authorization that we get from Interactive Brokers so that we can send it over to the broker we want to transfer our shares from. Before I show you what you need to do on the Giro's end, I'll just quickly show you the information you need to enter for transfer from Scalable Capital and Smart Broker as well. Here's what I needed to enter for Scalable Capital. The account number is your securities number, which you get under Profile Products on the Scalable website or app. 
As for the email field, which you can see here, I entered service at scalable.capital. Meanwhile, here's the info I needed to enter for smart broker plus the email service at smartbroker.de. Just don't forget to add the assets you want to transfer from each broker as well, just like I showed you in my DeGiro example. Now that we got the transfer forms from IB, we need to sign them and send them to each outgoing broker. Scalable Capital was by far the easiest and fastest for me. I simply signed the incoming transfer form from Interactive Brokers and send it to service at scalable.capital on July 27th. A few days later I received a confirmation that my request was forwarded to the custody bank and on August 8th my shares were already sitting in my Interactive Brokers account. Smart Broker was also easy. I signed a signed form to service at smartbroker.de and it took about three weeks to transfer my shares. Both Scalable Capital and Smart Broker charge zero fees for transfers by the way just like Trade Republic another one of my favorites. Well now comes the Giro. First, I send a form from IB, as well as an additional form because, of course, it's the Giro, titled Outgoing Transfer of Investment Portfolio you can find on their site and fill the two pages out like this. Now, the Giro's fees for transfers are not free, at least not for the Giro Ireland, which I had to move to once they closed the Giro Austria a few years ago. Maybe you get lucky and it's different for the Giro in your country. Here at the bottom you can also see some examples of the ridiculous fees the Giro charges for transfers of stocks and ETFs. 20 euros plus external fees for each position, in my case 28 euros. That's for each position you want to transfer by the way, which is a total ripoff in my opinion. Thank god I only had a single ETF there. Anyway, I then sent both the signed form by Interactive Brokers and the signed and filled out outgoing transfer form I got from the Giro to the email from their website. Just make sure you check which email you need to send your form to depending on your DeGiro country and don't just copy the one you just saw. Then after a bit of back and forth via email where they informed me about the 28 euros in fees they would charge me, my ETF shares were successfully transferred over on August 14th. So the whole thing took about three weeks. As of August 22nd, all three of my transfers were completed successfully. Now, here's an issue many brokers have with transfers, especially when they happen across borders. Oftentimes when you transfer a position, your new broker books the value of the shares on the day of the transfer as your purchase price, which is obviously wrong. For example, it was up over 30% on those shares already and you would then need to track your purchase price separately to make sure you pay the right amount of taxes once you sell. Luckily, Interactive Brokers has a useful feature which fixes this. Under performance and reports, tax documents, cost basis, position transfer, you can select the date you received a transfer and then enter the cost basis you had for these shares on your previous broker. After doing that, Interactive Brokers will be able to show the correct profits or losses for your positions since you bought them, which will make these a lot easier for you to track. The one exception should be if the two brokers are based in the same country. For example, if both of them are based in Germany. Let's say you're transferring shares from Scalable Capital to Trade Republic or the other way around, then the original purchasing price should be transferred as well. So this ended up becoming a lot longer than planned. Hopefully most of you didn't leave the video by this point. Many of you asked me how transfers work, so I wanted to share my experience in as much detail as possible with you while it was still fresh. Hopefully it was helpful. As for our ETF investment strategy, we're still only buying a single ETF, the accumulating Vanguard FTSE All World every month. Since my wife and I received a total of 8,000 euros in tax refunds for 2022, in part because we're parents now in Austria, we're currently investing a bit more than usual in addition to our recurring monthly investments. Speaking of that, make sure you check out the video I just published about lump sum investing versus cost averaging if you haven't seen it yet. All right, let's finally move on to my investments in peer-to-peer -peer lending. As usual, you can find the links to each peer-to-peer -peer lending platform in the description below in case you'd like to check any of them out and support me. Let's begin with my monthly overview. I earned a total of 361 euros in interest in August, making this my best month ever in P2P since 2018. According to Portfolio Performance, the free tool I use to track my investments, that's a monthly return of 0.9% and an internal rate of return of 9.28% from peer to peer lending this year. Now let's look at some P2P platforms one by one. Starting with the largest one, Mintos, which had a good month. My overdue payments also decreased further by a few euros, which I was happy to see. Two major groups of lending companies I'm also invested in on Mintos disclosed their latest financials. First, Delphin Group saw a 52% increase in revenue in Q2 and its earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation and amortization, aka EBITDA, increased by 46% compared to the first half of 2022. Meanwhile, the 11 Group's EBITDA in Q2 2023 increased to 36.1 million euros and its net profit increased to 13.6 million for the period. In addition, the group's CFO and CEO answered some investor questions in a video which could be interesting to you if you're invested in their loans as well. Either way, it's great to see that both lending companies are doing so well financially. Mintos is also getting ready to launch ETFs and bonds on the marketplace, so who knows, maybe we get lucky and we already get to see 
what their implementation is going to look like in September. Either way, I'll make sure to give you my honest review once they're live. Then we have Escadit, which ended up having a surprisingly good month overall, even though I had a bit of cash drag at the beginning of August. Luckily, loan supply picked back up though, and I'm back to being fully invested. Meanwhile, I had a great month on Via Invest as well, which kept on running smoothly on its own. Next up is Income Marketplace, where I had by far my best month thus far, with over 71 euros in interest payments. That's probably because I'm mostly investing in 15% interest loans by my favorite lending company ITF as well as a bit of Danarupia lately since supply of other loan originators has been more limited lately especially at that interest rate. Since I'm so heavily exposed to ITF I was happy to see that according to its latest financial results the ITF group managed to double its net profit in the first half of 2023 compared to the same period last year. Then we have Robocash which had a decent month as well. Sadly they significantly increased the minimum investment amount needed to receive a loyalty bonus so a slightly higher interest rate from 5000 to 20000 euros. As a result, I'm not earning 0.3% extra anymore, but that's all right. Lande had its best month so far with almost 48 euros in earnings. Since I'm very happy with the platform, I deposited an additional 250 euros in August. And that's everything I had to report regarding the portion of my investments I have in peer to peer lending. This brings me to the highly speculative small position I have in the two largest crypto assets, Bitcoin and Ethereum. These were a bit of a roller coaster once again. Towards the end of the month, it looked like we were getting some good news regarding an upcoming Bitcoin ETF in the US, which could be a good catalyst to drive Bitcoin higher, only to then find out that decisions on all six outstanding applications including BlackRock and Fidelity, have been delayed once again. Needless to say, that did not have a positive impact on Bitcoin's price. The number one cryptocurrency finished the month down 9.8% for a yearly return of 55.3% so far, and Ethereum was negatively impacted as well, down 11.3% for the month, with its returns year-to-date sitting at 35.7% now. Either way, this once again shows how risky these speculative investments are and why I limit them to 10% of my portfolio. Do I think they'll perform well over the next one to two years? Yes, I do, but there's no guarantee of that and it may very well go the other direction as well. And that's everything that happened to my investments in August. Once again, just a quick reminder that none of this was investment advice. I'm just openly sharing my personal opinion with all of you guys based on my own experience as an investor. Anyway, that's it for today. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to gently tap the like button and to subscribe if you'd like to see more. Also, if you'd like to support me and check out anything that I mentioned, feel free to use my links down below in the description. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a wonderful week and until next time.